Hello, my amazing artists. Are you ready for an awesome art project? Well, we are going to start doing some bigger projects. Now that we're getting to the second half of the year, we are going to have a virtual art show in April or May. Um, so we want to do some really awesome art to be able to show that. So this project that we're going to start this week is actually going to take us two, maybe three weeks. We'll see how much we get done next week. Um, but we're going to start learning how to make our artwork look more realistic because as we get older, we start learning new skills. We learn optical illusions. We learn all sorts of fun things to add into our artwork. So I'm going to show you a picture. This is pretty amazing, right? An artist drew this, okay? There's no tunnel, although it looks like a tunnel. It looks like I could put my fingers and hands right into my painting, but really, it's just a flat piece of paper. Okay, so this is kind of an optical illusion that we get to learn, and it's called linear perspective, or one point perspective, because there is one point that everything goes to. Okay, so we're going to learn a little bit about it first, and then I'll show you what we're going to be working on. All right, let's go. Perspective in art is a technique used to represent three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional surface. It's like a primitive form of virtual reality. The goal is to trick the viewer by creating an illusion of space and depth that is so convincing that the viewer accepts it as reality, at least at a subconscious level. Example, here's a painting by the artist René Magritte. Above the apple, the artist painted the words, this is not an apple. On a subconscious level, our instincts tell us, yes it is, of course it's an apple, but we've been tricked. And it actually takes a lot of effort and concentration to remind ourselves that we're not looking at an apple. We're looking at paint smeared around on a flat canvas, that's all it is. And since we're looking at this painting on a computer screen, the illusion goes one step further. It's just pixels. That's the reality. But even though we know that, we keep seeing an apple. In fact, it's really, really hard to not see an apple. And perspective is part of what creates that illusion. Now let's talk about linear perspective. There are different types of perspective and different techniques artists can use to create perspective. Linear perspective is one type of perspective that makes use of converging lines and vanishing points. It's all based on one simple fact. Objects appear smaller as they move further and further away from the viewer. Eventually, the objects can get so small and so far away that they seem to disappear together into a little point. This is called the vanishing point. To draw with linear perspective, you simply start with a vanishing point and work backwards. In linear perspective, you can work with one point perspective, two-point perspective, three-point perspective, four-point perspective, and even five-point perspective. In this lesson, we'll only be talking about one-point perspective. One-point perspective. Rule number one, establish your vanishing point. This can be anywhere on the page, and it can also be located off the page. The important thing is that you know where it is and that it doesn't move. If your vanishing point is high on the page, you'll have a high angle point of view in your finished drawing. If your vanishing point is low on the page, you'll have a low angle point of view in your finished drawing. Rule number two. If you have a visible horizon in your drawing, the vanishing point must be on the horizon or the effect won't work. Your objects will appear to float away into the air or they will dig into the ground. The vanishing point always needs to be on the horizon. Rule number three. All vanishing lines, in other words, all edges leading away from the viewer, should go to the vanishing point. Rule number four, every object you draw must have a surface that is facing you directly. There is no way around this when you are drawing in only one point perspective. You need two point perspective to draw objects or surfaces at an angle. There always needs to be a surface facing the viewer for objects drawn in one point perspective. Rule number five, Use light construction lines when you're building your drawing. You'll need to erase them later, and if you make them too dark, you won't be able to erase them completely. Rule six, if you have multiple vanishing points in one point perspective, the illusion of perspective will be lost. Only one vanishing point, and make sure it doesn't move. Conclusion, 
The more you understand this principle, the more use you can get out of it. For centuries, artists have created some truly astonishing illusions using one point perspective. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here, but let's take a quick look at this picture right here. Why does it look so realistic? So if you notice, all of these lines from the ceiling and the floor, they all seem to go in the same place. That means the vanishing point is somewhere around here. That's where all the lines connect. Let's look at the next one. This one's by Vincent van Gogh. Again, you can see this line moving in this direction. This line's moving in this direction. Even the buildings on the side are all coming together at the same place. So that has one little point and we call that the vanishing point. All right, so now that we understand what a vanishing point is, we are going to be making some floating 3D shapes all coming from a vanishing point. It looks like they're star bursting out on the paper, okay? So grab a white piece of paper. You're going to need a ruler or something with a straight edge and then a pencil, okay? So let's get started. So for this week, we are just going to be doing the drawing part. We're not going to be coloring or sharpening. We just want to get our picture um, started. So on your paper somewhere, you are going to put your vanishing point. It can go in the middle. It can go over here. If you do it further towards the edge, it might be a little more difficult, just so you know. So I'm going to show you the easiest way, and I'm going to put a spot in the middle. Okay. So now we're going to do some shapes around it. So I could do a triangle. I could do a circle. Let's get fancy and do a heart. Also think about your distance, how far away you want your objects. I'm going to do a square. Okay. Don't forget you have a ruler. So what I should have done was actually Done it nice and neat. That looks better. And let's get tricky. And I will do a semicircle. Okay. So I have my shapes. Now I'm going to draw lines to the vanishing point based on the corner. So I'm going to start with my triangle. So these are the points of the triangle that are closest to the vanishing point. So I'm lining up my ruler. Okay. So there's my pencil. Line it up to the vanishing point and draw a line. Boom. There's one. Line it up, make a line, line it up, and make a line. So now it looks like my triangle is going to the vanishing point or actually coming out from the vanishing point. Okay, it's in three dimension. How about a circle? Now a circle doesn't have a point. Well, what you want to do is you want to kind of use opposite sides of the circle. So if I put it here to there and now draw a line, there's one. And let's do from here to here. There's two. And what that is, is a 3D circle, which we call a cylinder. <laughs> So if you feel that you are getting the hang of this and you want a challenge, why don't you try doing some bubble letters? Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so a bubble letter. So say I'm going to do the letter T. I would do the letter itself as a bubble letter. And then this is where it gets a little tricky because I have one, two, three. Three, four, five, six points on my T. So that means I would have to do a lot of lines. So let's from, go from here. 
is one. Two, that is the top of the T. Okay, here's a point. It's going to get super skinny up in here, and that's okay. Now you see the side of that. Am I going to do a line here? No, because we understand overlapping, and that means the line is going to go behind the letter, and there's no point in drawing it. All right, let's do this one. That. And again, are we going to do this side? Nope, because it's going to overlap behind it, so we're not even going to see it. So that is how you would do a 3D letter. Okay, let's go back to the shapes. All right, I'm going to keep going okay, from the heart. Okay, I'm going to show you one last thing. My square, which is going to become a cube, remember a 3D square is a cube, you might run into the fact where my T is going to overlap in front of my square. So just like we know with overlapping, what we can't see will get hidden. So I'm going to start like I would with my line, start at my corner, and draw it into as far as I can. Once you hit that object in front of it, stop, and you're done. All right, so you are going to finish your shapes, okay? I have a big space of nothingness over here. I can add more shapes in. All right, so this is what you're doing today. Don't color it. Don't do Sharpie. All you're doing is pencil and filling your paper with shapes. All right, good luck. So once you finish this part of the project, hold on to it. What I would do is take your folder, slide it into it, and then this way you won't lose it, okay? Because we're going to continue with it next week, okay? Um, you do not have to send me a picture of this unless you want to. Maybe you have a question or be like, hey, Ms. Hazleton, did I do it right? Okay, or how can you help me better? Then yes, I will put a blank Google slide into the um, Google Classroom if you want to share it with me, but I'm not going to grade it until it's completely done in a couple weeks. Okay, so keep it in a safe spot and I'll see you next week. All right, bye guys.